welcome to CS uh, 10. This is uh, LO3A, I think. The topic of today is regular expressions. Regular expressions are something you may have heard about if, if, ever, if you've ever used a Unix system. If you, if you ever used Unix, or I guess they're known in every programming language, you may have heard of a regular expression or a regex. Uh, if you're in the terminal and you type ls star dot pdf, what does that do? How many of you use a terminal? How many of you guys know how to use a computer? You guys know what a GUI is? You know not that everyone knows what a GUI is, right? It gets you all the PDFs. It lists all PDFs. The, the star operator there in Unix and Bash is defined to expand to all possible strings of length zero or more. So ls star pdf will list all PDF files any file that ends with .pdf uh, in your terminal. Now, a regular expression in uh, a computer is sort of a really ugly programming language that's used for string matching. But the regular expressions that are used like in modern systems are much more advanced than the regular expressions we'll talk today. And they're not equivalent, it turns out. But we'll talk about their ancient history and where it comes from. Uh, which where it, it comes from uh, uh, what we're talking about today. The regular and regular expressions correspond to the regular languages. A regular expression is a string over the symbols uh, uh, epsilon, uh, A, B, empty set, union, and star, and the open and close parentheses. And a regular expression is something that corresponds to a regular language. Wow. Uh, corresponds to a regular language. So. The following are regular expressions. The empty set is a regular expression. Uh, the empty string is a regular expression. The letter A and the letter B, for and if you had more letters in your alphabet, those would also correspond to the regular expressions. Now each regular expression is kind of like a program. It is a sequence of symbols that corresponds to some regular language, right? The empty set corresponds to the regular language of the set containing no elements. The empty string actually does not correspond to a string. The empty string as a regular expression actually corresponds to the set containing the empty string. That's the denotion we'll make. We just don't write that to be short. The symbol A actually corresponds to the set containing only an A, and the symbol B corresponds to a set containing uh, only a B. Now we define a regular expression with these other operations of union, concatenation, and star. Those are the only operations a regular expression is defined over. No complement or anything, concatenation, concatenation, and clean star. Um, so that uh, if uh, ri, rj are regular expressions, uh, then so are the following ri union rj. Now this is a sequence of symbols containing the union symbol. This is a program. This is a string. This string contains the union symbol. But it corresponds to uh, the language of those. So the language of ri union rj is equal to the language corresponding to ri union the language corresponding to rj. Right. Where language of ri, language of rj, l of ri, l of rj corresponds to the language that that one corresponds to, right? Now, if you have ri and rj regular expressions, you may concatenate them to get ri, rj, which corresponds to the concatenation of the languages. So if you have ri, the concatenation of rj, it's going to be equivalent to the concatenation. The concatenation of the regular expressions corresponds to the language, which is the concatenation of the language of each regular expression, ri. Right. Concatenation of languages means let, what? If you have A, B, this is equal to strings X, Y, such that X is an A and Y is an B. So it's a concatenation of, of uh, every possible pair of languages from the first with every possible uh, pair of those from the second. That's what it means to concatenate two languages. Uh, Ri star is going to correspond to zero or more copies of Ri. So, we 
which is going to be uh, L of Ri star is going to correspond to the language of L of Ri star. Uh, where uh, L star is going to be zero or copies of whatever's in that language specifically. So it's going to be the union of I is equal to zero to infinity of L of I, which is equal to the set containing nothing, uh, union L, union LL, etc. So zero or more copies of whatever elements are in that language. These are the three operations that a regular expression is, to, is defined over. There is no complement. There's nothing else. All modern regular expressions, they like did it this way, and they're like, well, let's add in all this extra stuff to be useful. But a regular expression is only has these three basic operations and nothing else. Uh, we're going to go through like a million examples today, but are there any questions before we, before we do? Are the parentheses just for like... Order of operations. Yeah. Now, what are the order of operations? I don't believe in PEMDAS, like uh, ethically uh, or morally. Uh, I'd rather just put as many parentheses as possible, making it unambiguous. Right? PEMDAS is if you don't have any parentheses, but we have parentheses, right? Um, and it'll make more sense when we when we when we'll use the parentheses for, for PEMDAS. Right? Uh, right. So let's just do some examples. I'm going to give you some regular expressions, and you tell me what languages they correspond to, okay? A star. What language is A star? All the words that just have A? Yes. How many? As, ma as many as you can, like, endless. So that description, I don't think, is satisfactory. Uh, countably, sufficient. countably infinite? Uh, too, too strong, too strong. Oh. Uh, so given your definition, I'm not aware if the empty string is in this language. Oh, Things like this. It is, in, it, it, it is in the language. Okay, so what is another name for A star? Zero or more copies of A? Perfect, perfect. So we see that a regular expression is really a shorthand for some regular language. Here, uh, A star is zero or more copies of A. Right. Uh, what about uh, A union B? What is A union B a regular expression for? Set containing A and B. Right. Take the definition here of the union of the two languages. The language of RI is going to be just the language A. R J is a language just containing B, so the union of those is just going to be those. This is another way you can write the set containing A and B. What about uh, A union B star? First off, is the empty string in that language? Yeah, you can take zero copies of it. What other strings are in the language? There's zero more copies of A or B. So what is the name of that? Zero more copies of A or B? Is that sigma star? That's sigma star. That's actually just as all strings. And in fact, we usually use as a shorthand sigma is equal to A union B. And that then uh, sigma star is then just A union B. B star. So when he wrote sigma star, actually we wrote a regular, regular expression, we just didn't define it as a regular expression. Um, how is this, so what a regular expression is, first off, a regular expression is non-deterministic, okay? It is not, it is, in some sense you can think of it first off as a specification, a program of a specific regular language, or you can think of it as a superposition of one of the strings in that language that is yet to be determined, right? So what you can do is when you take a union of things, you can think of that as non-deterministically choosing one of those things. And then you can think of a star as non-deterministically choosing some number of things. Right? So union, you choose one. And then star, you choose some number, zero or more. Right? So actually, you can think of this as a specification and uh, it's one of the strings in the language, but it's not yet been decided, not deterministically, which one of those strings it is. So A union B star, you can think of this as like, uh, 
Uh, let's say you choose the string, you choose the length of the string first to be three. So you know that's like A union B three, which is like A union B, A union B, A union B, right? Something like that. Now, A union B, A union B, A union B, these all specify one letter of the string of length three. This not deterministically choose the first letter of the string, the second letter of the string, and the third letter of the string. So let's say I choose A, A, B. That's why it contains all strings, right? Um, what about uh, A star, B, A star? Zero more A's and then a B and then zero more A's again. That is a literal interpretation that's correct, but there's a shorter human description of this language. What's another characterization of it? It is zero more A's, a B and then zero more A's. Uh, the, a B exists in the... A B exists. It's stronger than that. That's true. Palindromes that have a B in the middle? Like not, that's language. definitely not true. It's not palindromes. If there's no requirement that non deterministically choosing the first number of A's is exactly the last group of A's. Those may be different. A B exists somewhere in the string? Here's the, here's the answer I'm looking for. I think you guys got it. Uh, strings with exactly one B. He definitely meant that. He said at least one. I said there exists. Uh, there exists uh, one, one, but like. that's different than the, the, the exactly <laughs> yeah, one. Because your BB would be in your language, but it's not by this right expression. But that's not what I was imagining, but it's uh, okay. <laughs> this is an agreement we all have. You have to specify that. This is strings with... Exactly one B. Um, what about uh, A union B star? B A union B star. Strings with at least one B? Yeah. Strings with at least one B. Some prefix is non deterministically chosen, a B is enforced. Some postfix, some suffix, I guess, is non deterministically chosen. So any string that's produced by this must contain a B. Yes. Be clear that like a union b cubed, that three is not like part of our link, like our sh symbols. It's just that's like the shorthand we use in strings. It is not a part of the regular expression, but uh, you should. I will allow it. Right? It's just a shorthand for uh, three copies of whatever this is. So I don't have to. This is what it really should be written as, but it's unambiguous to what that means. Yeah. Questions so far? Okay. What about um. Uh. A star, uh, B star. Any number of A's followed by any number of B's? Yeah. All the A's have to come before all the B's. There is another, there's some other characterizations of this. All strings that don't contain B A as a substring. If there exists a B in the language, it comes after all possible A's. Things like this, right? We kind of understand what, what this is. If we were to write this one out, uh, does this contain the empty string? Yes. Uh, a, B, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, uh, A, B, B, right? Something like this. Those are some strings of the language. All the A's have to come before all the B's. We see immediately that regular expressions are pretty useful to describe a language or something. If I want to say the set of strings where all A's come before all B's, that's cumbersome. I can just write A star, B star. What about... Uh, um, Sigma, sigma star. Give me a human definition of that one. Notice this parentheses here. This is not sigma star, sigma star. Does it have to be uh, a string with an even number of letters? A string of even length, yeah. This is even length strings. Right? Sigma, sigma is what? Those are all strings of length 2. Right? Let's expand this a little bit. Sigma, sigma is going to be like A union B, A union B, and 
Uh, cool thing about regular expressions, they have a lot of algebraic properties. I mean, like, you know a little bit about uh, arithmetic. We get kind of a distributive property here. We get AA, uh, AB, BA, BB, right? That's what that looks like. It's like non deterministically choose the first letter to be an A or B, non deterministically choose the second letter to be an A or B. So you get A union B, A union B is going to be all strings of length 2, right? So sigma sigma star is going to be zero or more copies of strings of length 2 for whatever string of length 2 it is. So consider any, excuse me, any even length string. I give you any string of even length. You can parse that and break it up into pieces of size 2 such that it will uh, be produced by this regular expression, right? Questions on that? Do we see that one? Yes? Sigma star does not contain the empty string. Sigma star does, does contain the empty string. Si that's, a, that's a little gotcha. Uh, sigma, if you have a, anything to the star, zero copies of that. The star is zero or more copies of it. So anything to the star must contain the empty string. Let's consider uh, how different this is than sigma star, sigma star. What is sigma star, sigma star? Is that the same as just sigma star? Yes. This is a concatenation of two regular expressions, which are stars of something. That's any string concatenated with any string, right? But if you notice, uh, this contains the empty string, right? So we can think of this as like, uh, this is sigma star, and this one is like the empty string, uh, A, B, A, A, right? And we want to concatenate all possible pairs. So everything in this, we can concatenate with the empty string, and we'll get anything back. So in fact, the way you would prove this is all strings is just say, well, sigma star is a subset of sigma star, sigma star, right? Those are regular expressions. Um, so if you have the universe, all possible elements are a subset of something that, that something must be equal to it, right? Uh, similarly, what is sigma star uh, concatenated with the empty string? Here, this is a symbol representing a set containing the empty string. You can't concatenate strings. You can, but you can concatenate languages, and you can concatenate the elements of those languages. And this is, this is remember, secretly for the set containing the empty string. What is sigma star concatenated with the empty string? Itself. Yeah, it's just sigma star. What is uh, A star concatenated with sig uh, the empty string? Yeah, it's just A star. So in some sense, the empty string acts kind of like a multiplication by one, right, with respect to concatenation. What about uh, sigma star concatenated with A? That's a tricky one. All strings, and you concatenated every single string with an A. All strings that end with an A. That end with an A? That's true, yeah. It's all strings that end with, a, with an A. Um, what about uh, sigma star A, A, B, sigma star? Uh, all strings that have A, A, B as a substring. A, A, B. And this is a regular expression that produces all strings that have A, B as a substring. Again, we witness the power of non-determinism, right? You probably remember from your algorithms class something about the difficulty, maybe even your data structures class, the difficulty of finding of certain substring problems. You know, you may, like, given a string, you want to find a certain substring in it, a palindromic, whatever, you know, who knows. You have some DP thing. You have to instantiate some non-trivial problem. You're looking and you're searching. When you're doing that, you're really, what you're doing is you're searching for a needle in a haystack. But with the power of non-determinism, we have the opposite problem, and it's much simpler to go that way. Uh, instead of given a haystack, search for the needle, first what you do is you place the needle and non-deterministically choose all possible haystacks around the needle. So given that, you can enumerate all possible problems rather than trying to search for a solution. That's our needle. You non-deterministically choose a haystack in the front and a haystack at the back. You've chosen a total haystack. Right? Uh, 
Again, the power of non-determinism. This can, can, this can contain multiple substrings, A, A, B. But it enforces that at least one must exist somewhere in there. Yes? How do you make sure that, like, the thing, the haystack in the front is the same as the haystack in the back? You specifically don't. Oh. You especially, you, you, you very specifically will not. And we'll talk about this later. It turns out that A star, B star is not the same as the set A to the N, B to the N, N is a number. Those are very different. It's, they have no control of each other, right? You don't enforce the equality. Um, this is any number of A is followed by any number of B. I was saying, like, B. could you? You're saying no. you can't. In fact, you can't, and we'll, we'll have to prove this next time. You cannot, you cannot enforce that. We'll, we'll like, the next, second half today, we'll prove non-regular languages. If you could, that would be forms of WWW w, the superstar, right? We'll prove that one is not regular. Um, okay? What if L is, uh, what about, uh, like, A star union the empty set? Valid regular expression over union concatenation stars. Empty set is a valid regular expression. What is A star union empty set? A star. A star. Okay. Trick question. A star concatenated with the empty set. The empty set. Vacuously, the concatenation is, is the, the way concatenation is defined vacuously, there's no strings in this. Because there's no strings in the empty set, there's nothing to concatenate with. So you're left with nothing. This is not something I would expect you to know, but it's some just, and it won't, you won't have to remember it, it won't come up anywhere, but just know that the, this is defined. Uh, final trick question, what is the empty set star? Empty set? Empty set? Nope. Strip. 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 Well, it has to be one of the weird ones, right? It can't be A. So it has to be either the empty set or the empty string. So it's going to be actually this, the, the way the precedence works is you take zero more copies <coughs> of nothing. Zero copies of nothing is the empty string. So that's the way that falls. Not something particularly to remember, but just know it's defined. The empty st string acts kind of like a multiplication by one. The empty set acts kind of like a multiplication by zero. So there's some kind of algebraic properties in here, although it's not as nice as we would hope, like a, 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 a other algebraic objects. There's nothing like those. But it's hinting and similar towards that direction, right? All right, so these are regular expressions. So given certain regular languages, I think you could be expected to come up with some. Yeah. Could you explain again the second one? I don't, I don't get it. Like, this uh, one. The second one. That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, basically, you don't have to know why this works. You can just assume it to be true. And I'll never test you on this, okay. if, if, if that helps. Vacuously, like, why do we, how do we define a concatenation? Uh, the language A, B is defined as... Strings x, y, concatenation of strings x, y, such that x is an a and y is in b. But there, if b is the empty set, there is no y in b. So there's nothing to concatenate with. So you're, con you're concatenating over nothing. So nothing is concatenated, so there's nothing in this language, which could, therefore can only be the empty set. That's sort of the way the vacuity falls. Right. So these are some regular expressions. Again, they're simply, I, I, when I talked about NFAs, I tried to say, pretend, oh, non-determinism was this cool, magical thing, and look how much more powerful we made a DFA. Unfortunately, I can't even pretend the regular expressions are more powerful than the models we've considered so far because they're called regular expressions. So they have to be regular. And it'll turn out that the regular expressions are equivalent to the regular languages, the languages that they, they, they describe, the NFAs, the DFAs, and so on. So we need to... Prove that. We want to prove an equivalence. We want to prove that every... Uh, oh, my mic was not on the whole time. Oh, well. We want to prove that every regular language... Uh, if a language is... A, re a language is regular if and only if it has a regular expression. So um, let uh, L Rex be the class of languages described by uh, regular expressions. We prove 
they are regular. So we want to first, to prove that they're regular, we want to do a, uh, take a model that we know produces a regular language and then contrast it with that. What are the models we know decide regular languages? DFAs, what else? NFAs. So now, when you're choosing between DFAs and NFAs, there's trade-offs. NFAs are cool because they're non-deterministic. You get to relax and do some things for free. DFAs can be cool when you need certain properties. You want some, so for some problems, you would like determinism. And so maybe that makes a certain proof easier. I'll tell you, because, the, because of the uh, allegories we've been making to non-determinism, we would want to prove equivalence to the uh, NFAs. And because we proved every NFA has a DFA, and every DFA is an NFA, it, it turns out it's the same as proving DFAs, right? So what we're going to prove is we'll first prove that every regular expression has some NFA. So convert a regular expression to an NFA. And then we'll prove that every NFA can be converted into a regular expression. So by proving a double set containment of those two classes, we must prove that it can only be the case that they're equal. So the regular expressions decide exactly in only the regular languages. Any questions before we proceed on a regular expression itself? So given that we know, actually, I should not have erased it, but I just erased the definition of what a regular expression is. Let's take the formal definition of a regular expression and uh, see if we can convert it into uh, an NFA. So what is a regular expression? The empty set. The empty string, A, B, and then uh, if R, I, R, J are rejects, then so are R, I, union R, J, R, I, R, J, and R, I, star, right? Given a definition like this, this is, an, this is a recursive definition, right? You have some atomic base cases, and then you have, assuming ri and rj are regular, you get a way to build bigger regular expressions, right? This is a recursive definition of what a regular expression is. A regular expression is one which is built from two smaller regular expressions. And you keep saying it that way until you go to your base cases. But given that you have a recursive definition, what proof technique should be used to prove uh, correctness of something, of anything? We want to convert a regular expression into an NFA. What proof technique should we use, given that the definition is recursive? Induction. induction. Historically, induction and recursion actually meant the same thing. But we'll prove that every regular expression has an NFA by induction. So uh, we proceed. Induction. Uh, base cases. What are our base cases? Yeah, our four things. So um, we want to prove that every regular expression has a corresponding NFA. So our base cases are going to be the regular expressions, the empty set, the empty string, A and B. And we want to prove that each of these decide a language that has a corresponding NFA. What is the corresponding NFA for the empty set? Give me an NFA that decides the empty set. Give me a node that, doesn't, that isn't accepted. QED, that's an NFA that accepts nothing. Okay. What is an what is an NFA that accepts the empty string? Start state is an exception. Anything else? No. Any any string of length greater than one is implicitly rejected from that. Uh, what about the set containing A and the set containing B? Give me an NFA that accepts the string A and nothing else. Say with the for or just an A. Ah, you want to do an A self loop. Would that accept AA? Start state that's not accepting a single line, like a single arrow A, to an accepting state, and everything else is implicitly rejected. B is done the same, and you do it for whatever your alphabet is, ABC, and so on. 
Would you agree that those are four NFAs, four or four base cases that to decide the languages that they correspond to? So the four base case languages are um, regular. They have NFAs for them. Let ri, rj be regular expressions. that have uh, NFAs, NI, and NJ corresponding to the same language. Corresponding to the same language. That's our induction hypothesis. We prove there is an NFA for Ri union Rj, Ri concatenated with Rj, and Ri star. So let ni and nj be regular expressions corresponding to ri and rj. We want to give a regular expression for ri union rj. So we know that some NFA like this exists. It has some start state. And this is ni. And then we know we have some uh, NFA like this. Maybe there's something going on in here. Who knows? Something like this, right? Uh, I'm using a picture to represent a formal definition of what the NFA is. Q, sigma, Q0, whatever. We, we know that there's one uh, start state. There may, for each NFA, there may be multiple accept states, whatever, right? This is a, this is a great proof because it's proof by picture. What is an NFA? This is NI, this is NJ. What is an NFA for the union of the two regular expressions? You just go from the accepting states of NI into the starting state of NJ. That would be the concatenation which we'll do in a second. So come, pretend you said that in five minutes, in two minutes. What is a, concat what is a, uh, what is a regular expression for the union? You can actually just put the two, like just erase the lines between the pictures, and that works, because you can have multiple starting states. You cannot have multiple starting states. The formal definition of NFA requires you to not have multiple uh, starting states. You can states. have one starting state, and you just draw epsilon because it's just that. Uh, one starting state with epsilon. Yeah, so you have to correspond to the formal definition, add a new start state, remove the old two start states, Add epsilon transitions to the two NFAs. That's the more formal way to say it. What, you, what this means is you basically non-deterministically choose which NFA to run it on. We talked about this last time. Non-deterministically choose which NFA to run it on. That'll accept the union of the two, right? Great. Now, what about this? Is this is uh, this represents an I uh, union L of N J. Now, what about concatenation? Let me draw the NFAs again. Um, what was your solution? Go from the accepting states of Ni into the starting state of Nj with the epsilon transition. There's, what else? One, one other thing, a few, two other things need to be done. Hmm. You need self loops into the accepting states with epsilon transitions, but those are implicit. Make sure that you like unmark the final states. Yeah, you don't want these to be final states anymore. And you don't. The second thing was you don't want this to be an accept state, anymore, a start state anymore. So remove the start state of NJ, remove the final states of NI, and connect through an epsilon transition every start state uh, of the two. Here's the reason this works. I mean, obviously by the, by the picture it works, but here's the reason. If x y is in uh, like uh, L of NI. L of nj, right? The concatenation of these two. Every word accepted by an NFA is actually a path and a graph, right? X is a sequence of letters that'll get you from the start state of ni to an accept state of ni. Y is a sequence of letters that'll get you from a, from a start state of nj to an accept state of nj. 
So the concatenation of, of those two paths will get you from the start state of ni to, to the end state of nj. So the concat is the, it's the same reason all these graph algorithms work, by concatenating paths together. Concatenating the words is concatenating the paths in the graphs. It's the same reason. right? So we know that they're closed under uh, union. We also know that NFAs are closed under concatenation. We want to now conclude that the NFAs are closed under star. So this, this, we, we, this is a unary operation. We have ni. So you have three states, something like this. Some start state. Okay. What, uh, how should we, I'll tell you this answer is a trick. Why, what should we do to compute ni star? And again, the star is zero or more copies of the strings in that language. Uh, the start state is accepting. Uh, make that lead into the old start state. Unmark all of the other accepting states as accepting and make them all epsilon transition to the start. Or no, no, sorry, don't, don't unmark them, but make them epsilon transition to the start. Yeah. You're going to mark this one as accepting as well. Now, why are you going to do that? And why do you have to add a new state, a start state here? This is kind of a gotcha uh, reason. You may think that, well, why don't I, why don't, when I, what I want to do is when I get to the end of the NFA, I want to go back to the beginning and take the roller coaster again. The number of times I take the transition is the number of times, the number of concatenations of the language itself that I'm trying to accept. But why do I have to add this extra dummy state here? And it turns out there's just a small bug if you don't do this, where you may accidentally accept a string you don't want. Consider this one. Right? If you want to accept, you, this, this, what is the language accepted by this NFA? Strings that end in A, or Str have one A and it's at the end. Yeah. Now, what if you did like this star? Right? I mean, it would be strings that ends with A star. It would actually be sigma star, right? But you don't want, if you were to just do an epsilon here and mark this as accepting, that would accept BBB and things like this, which maybe you don't want to accept, right? So there's some other edge cases you can think of uh, where that doesn't work. When you, when you take anything to the star, just think zero copies of that has to accept the empty string. So the start state has to be accepting, or you have to be able to epsilon from the start state to an accepting state. So certainly one of these two will be accepting. We'll just make it that one to make it simpler. Then you go through the roller coaster some number of times. Right. Um, what's left in the proof? QED, we're done. Every regular expression, uh, by, by induction, Every regular expression uh, has an equivalent NFA. That's one of the most powerful things about induction is the assumption of the induction hypothesis. We were only able to create NFAs using other NFAs, right? Yeah. Can you see like the drawing proves it? On a homework, can we prove by drawing too? Um, you should describe. So by, when I'm writing things on the board, I'm not writing down everything that I'm saying out loud. But you should write down everything you say out loud. Like you didn't have to tell me what delta was. Uh... I, I did. I did say it out loud. I did say, for example, remove. I did say add an epsilon for this one. For example, I said add an epsilon. Add new state. Add epsilon transition to two old start states. And I did say make this one a start state. That so when I say add the transition is in, in some sense I'm specifying what delta is. When you turn in the proof on the homework, and there's a question on the homework like this that is easily seen with the picture, you don't have to over describe what the transition function is. But it should be unambiguous what it is, right? Although the picture is nice and clean, I'm also saying things out loud. Right. And it's expected some of that is communicated as well. Right. Um, so not only is this proof by induction proof that every regular expression has an NFA, we know that the regular expressions are no more powerful than NFAs. It actually gives us a procedure to convert any NFA into a, excuse me, every regular expression into an NFA. Right? We just simply apply the induction stuff. So consider the following. Uh, we apply these three operations to the NFAs that we know. Uh, I mean, to the base cases. Consider the consider the NF, uh, excuse me. Consider the regular expression A B union A A B star, right? We can give an NFA for this uh, regular expression. So first, we're just going to break it atomic. We have to sort of parse bottom up. We know we have a, we have an NFA for uh, A, and we have an NFA for B. So we know we can make an NFA for A, B by epsiloning these together. 
Now, when we took the uh, concatenation of two languages, we didn't make the we had to add an epsilon transition here. Although here it's unambiguous, we could do this with two transitions instead of three. The way we proved it uses three transitions. And there is a small issue that happens if you don't add an epsilon for certain cases. If there's a self-loop on those states, there's some, uh, an issue occurs. Um, then we can do one for uh, AAB, right? Now we want to create a uh, NFA for A, B, union A, A, B. What should we do? We create an NFA for A, B. We create an NFA for A, A, B. What's an NFA for A, B, union A, A, B? Yeah. Do the start state and then link the, the starting nodes with epsilon transitions. There we go. So that's the NFA for A, B, union A, A, B. How should we make an NFA for AB union AB star? Let's just literally follow the procedure in a black box way. Add a new start state, make it accepting. Epsilon transition to the old start state. For each accept state, epsilon transition to the old start state. Am I missing anything? State on your oh. oh, yes, thank you. I'm supposed to remove those. All right, awesome. So that is now an NFA for that regular expression. Is it the best NFA for that regular expression? No. Um, the shortest one, what's the shortest one you can think of? You could do A, B, A, union A, A, B with like non deterministically choosing between epsilon or A in the first letter, and then choosing A, B. Right? And then doing zero more copies of that. So that one might work. I guess you want to accept zero copies of that. So that would be a simpler NFA for the same thing. Sometimes you can be better of a programmer than uh, what the procedure describes you. But that's OK. We're not caring about optimality. In fact, we don't even care. Like, I'm, not, I'm never going to say, given a regular expression, what's the NFA that's equivalent to it? The, we're not concerned with the fact that the NFA is nice or anything. We're concerned with the fact that the NFA exists at all. Yeah? No, sorry. Why did you add the little epsilons in the A, B string again? Um, because the, the, just following the way we proved it, you have to do that. Now, suppose you don't do that. Suppose you just make the, start, the, end, the final state of one the start state of the next. Suppose you just merge those two states, right? Bad things happen. Uh, think of it this way. <coughs> Right? When you do that, you enforce that the A transitions, then you to epsilon, then the B transitions occurs. But when you merge them, what happens? You can have a B before A. You could do the B here, and then you could have the A here. That's not allowed. Things like that can happen. Yeah? Do we have like a set of known NFA transitions that won't have an effect on the language, like adding an epsilon transition uh, in our A, B? that like, could allow you to systematically change either of these languages back into each other? And, like, you know that they're going to give the same end result? Right. When you perturb the NFA, you want to make sure that none of the strings accept that are accepting are no longer accepting. None of the strings that are rejecting are no longer rejecting. I don't know if I could come up with a definitive list of everything. Usually adding a transition in general will change the language. Changing the final states will change the language. If you think about all possible paths, you have to consider the path as invariant to this change, whatever that means. So I'm not sure if I can come up with a list. Certainly adding a self-loop of epsilon wouldn't do anything. It would have to be case by case, I think. I, I don't know how to do that exactly. But I think you can understand the, the cool part about NFAs is doing that, is messing with them in that, in that way. All right, let's do, so we've shown that the NFAs are no more, the regular expressions are no more powerful than the NFAs. Now we want to show that uh, how power the NFA the regular expressions are as powerful as the regular expressions. Uh, yeah. the NF, the, we, we showed that the regular expressions are not more powerful than NFAs. Now we want to show that the NFAs are not more powerful than regular expressions. By doing a double set containment, we've proved that they're equal. Now we want to there's two classic proofs of conversion 
of an NFA into a regular expression. One is done with like this really messy proof by induction that would take the whole class. Mike Sipser in the book, Theory of Computation, he has a new proof, which is a little detailed, but it does output usefully what the actual regular expression is given the NFA. And so he defines something called the GNFA, which is an NFA, and I won't go too in depth in what the, what, how this is formalized, but a GNFA is an NFA, but uh, transitions can have regular expressions on them. Um, start state has no incoming. One final state has no outgoing. Uh, and every pair of states has a transition. So what it, this generalization, the most important one, the other ones are just so that the proof works out. The start state having, uh, excuse me, transitions having rejects uh, on them basically means before they read, a, when you read, take a transition, you read a single symbol off the front of the word, right? If the next word in your symbol was an A, then you took an A and you took the transition. Now you can have a rejects on the string. Now, the way you take a transition in what's called a GNFA is you non-deterministically choose some prefix of the word that matches the regular expression. That may include the empty string, it, or that may include the none of the word if that allows it. And then the NFA, the GNFA accepts similarly non-deterministically either exists a computation path for all possible ways you could non-deterministically choose prefixes for the transitions, things like this. The reason we are allowing ourselves to put NF GNFAs on the transitions is because what we're going to do is what's called the method of ripping. We're going to rip states out of the NFA repeatedly. We're going to convert an NFA to a GNFA. We're going to repeatedly rip states out of the NFA until we're left with only two states left. Then we're going to have one transition in two states, and that's, that is going to contain a regular expression on it. That regular expression is going to be our answer. It's going to be the conversion of the NFA into uh, the whole uh, GFA. Excuse me, the regular expression. So if we have like uh, suppose we have the following substructure in some NFA. Something like this, okay? And we have marked for death this middle state, okay? We're going to rip that state out. But we want the, NF, the GNFA to be there with one less state, but we still want it to be correct. So we want to consider to replace that by one transition of all possible paths from state 1 to state 2. But now, instead of, a set of tr instead of a, several transitions that can go from state 1 to state 2, we're going to replace it by one transition. So this is four regular expressions, uh, ways to get to uh, from state 1 to state 2. We're going to replace that by one regular expression that not deterministically matches a way to get from state 1 to state 2. So notice that this has three states, this has two states. So we're going to repeatedly do this, repeatedly cut out a state, and we'll be left at the end with just a start state and an accept state with one transition on it. What regular expression should go here? Consider all possible paths to go from 1 to 2. Right? Let's say you take the above path. What regular expression would take you from 1 to 2 using the above path? R1, R2 star, R3. Now, what path can take you below is just R4. So you say or R4. That is a regular expression that actually simulates the above thing, right? Now, in practice, this is actually really messy. You have to consider all possible paths from 1 to 2, that all, or all possible paths that go through that state. Like, let's say you had something like this, right? You would have to count that 
as part of your, uh, part of your writing expression. If you had something that looks like this, when you mark this one for death, you'll have to do it like this. Right. Because you can go this way, this way, this way, and this way. Right. So if you were to delete the state like this, it incurs a lot more edges. But you repeatedly do this until you're left with only two states, and you'll be left only with the regular expression. We're going to only do, rather than prove formally and very strongly that this is the case, we're just going to sort of uh, do a simple example, and hopefully that can convince you how to convert any uh, NFA into a regular expression using this procedure. The formal proof of correctness is quite involved and difficult because of the whole non deterministically choosing a prefix of a string. All possible strings that can get you from here to here, choose some prefix of this. Uh, how do you prove that's the same thing as that? It's, it's not conceptually very difficult. It's just quite tedious. Uh, one final comment before we get to the example of that is you guys have heard of the floyd warshall algorithm? floyd warshall algorithm is an all-pair shortest path algorithm. Uh, the floyd warshall algorithm is actually inspired by this algorithm for, 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 for doing this. Because consider the regular expression that takes you from 1 to 2. You could compute that as uh, um, a uh, sort of a shortest path recurrence, right? So you could think of the shortest path from 1 to 2 as either the current shortest path, or for all possible states that are not ripped out, the path through those. It's end, it ends up being the same recurrence. It's sort of a, a, a historic fact. Let's uh, do the example of this. So I'm going to give you the following uh, NFA. Right. We have the following NFA. What strings does this NFA accept, like in human words? Strings that start with B. Any str what about AB? Any string containing a B. You go to the accept state when there's a B. A, 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 and you stay there. As soon as you see a B, you're in, the, you're in the accept state, and then you stay in the accept state for whatever else you read. So any string containing a B. So at least one B's, right? Now, we need to convert this into a regular expression. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, make sure there's exactly one start state and one accept state, and then rip out the states one at a time. So what we're going to do is add one new start state and add one new accept state. New start state. Would you agree that's the same NFA so far? Just epsilon did a new start state, epsilon did a new accept state. Now, pick one of the states to rip out. The first one or the second one? Go and pick a number. Second one. So now we want to consider all possible paths that go from this first state to the final state, because that's the, the in between the states we're ripping out. We can take a B transition. B is a regular expression. We have A comma B, and then we have an epsilon. So following our pattern, that's going to be A. What's going to be star here? A union B. A union B. It's A or B. It's also should be first. Oh, thank you. And then the final one? Epsilon. Is it useful to have that there? No, but we're following the protocol. Right. Now we're going to delete this state. We're going to be left, we're going to do the same transition. <coughs> we're going to be, uh, the first rejects is going to be epsilon. The self loop is going to be A. 
And then the last one is going to be that one. Right. Now, uh, we can actually, we're, we're, we're left with two states, one transition. We take that as our regular expression. That's all we have. Uh, we can simplify it further. Epsilon A, B, A union B star. And notice that is exactly the, the same computation as the whole uh, NFA that we did. We were able to convert a NFA into a regular expression. Uh, uh, an example is not a proof, but uh, it's sufficient for us to understand that every NFA can be converted into a regular expression. Right. Yes? Do we have to prove as part of this that like every transition can be turned into a regular expression, or do we already know that? Every transition can be turned into a regular expression. Every transition uh, is already a regular expression, the regular expression containing one symbol. OK, I get it. Yeah. Uh, and if a pair of states doesn't have a transition between them, you put the empty set as the regular expression on there. There's no path between those two pairs of states, right? So lots of little details that uh, I think conceptually the bigger picture is more important than going to the little ones, right? Uh, all right, so we've proven then that these are the same. So the, and the regular expressions are our third regular model. Technically, we have four now with the G interface, but let's not talk about them too much. The regular expressions are exactly and only the regular languages. All right. Any questions on this proof? All right. 